Bangkok morning. It's a live broadcast. Not that I think anybody's actually going to listen to it. It's just easier to make a live broadcast when you're making announcements. So, woke up at 6 a.m. It's like when the rooster crows. Sunrise was 5.50 a.m. Bangkok time today. The temperature currently is 83 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees Celsius. I'm sitting here in the pool, relaxing. Noise over the other end of the pool splashing around. This really makes it easy for me. It's quarter till seven. And one of the reasons I'm making this, ah, somebody stopped by. Hello, Steven. How are you this morning? I'm making this little live broadcast, Stephen, to, to make an announcement on how life's changing for me in the future here. And uh, like I said, it's quarter till seven at Bangkok. Stephen, where are you from again? Where are you staying? What part of what part of the country or world are you hanging out in them? Anyway, uh, basically. Saskatchewan, Canada. Okay, well, it's uh, 28 degrees Celsius here. I don't know what temperature it is in Saskatchewan. But the reason for this live broadcast is I'm making a change. When I came to Thailand, it was in July. Hey, Cameron. I'm the USA one bit, buddy. You can you can take all that divisiveness and craziness. And I do miss Sammy, though. Cameron's joined us on the live chat real quick. He was, he was kind enough as a veterinarian in the United States to take my one and only Sammy, the cat that thinks he's a dog. And uh, uh, thank you, Cameron. Uh, I had a cat who thought she was a dog. So all she wants to do is sit on your lap. But here, here's the big announcement that I wanted to make before everybody gets bored. Uh, sitting here in the pool at quarter till seven, I got here in July of last year and I spent a month in the hotel and then I realized I wanted to get a condo so I took a 12 month lease on this condo uh, right here in Sukhumvik which is a great location but my lease comes due on August 3rd and I'd have to renew my lease and I decided I'm getting a storage unit I'm putting all the stuff that I've accumulated and brought with me that I don't need in a storage unit me and I are going to take a car and travel around all of Thailand for until uh, the end of the year at least. At least that's the plan initially. We're going to go to places that I haven't been before. Remember, Thailand's a pretty big place. I don't know the exact amount, but if you was to spread it long ways or tilt it, you know, it covers an area maybe half the size of the United States, and you got Everything from rice fields to mountains to jungles to beaches to big cities to little cities. I mean, it's sort of akin to, to traveling all over the United States where you got deserts and high deserts and wheat fields and corn fields and big cities and, you know, beaches and not so great beaches. The Redneck Riviera down there in, uh, in Florida. Uh, what? I mean, there's a lot of places to see, so we're going to put all our stuff away. We're not going to have an apartment. We're going to, I'm not buying a car here either. It's interesting. They got this place here called Easy Cars. And the best price I could find on a car, let's say, at a discount, you know, through rentalcars.com or through Expedia or Hotwire or whatever, seemed like about as cheap as I could get would be somewhere in the neighborhood of... $600 a month to rent a car. And I don't know what kind of car I want. So renting a car is pretty cool, but there's this place called Easy Cars. And what you do is you sort of set up a little account with them. And they're real close to here, but they've got they've got branches all over the country. And uh, it's inside of a Lexus dealership. But they have Mazdas and Hondas and Toyotas and all kinds of different models and all kinds of different prices. But it's basically goes down to about $480 a month for like a medium. A Mazda 2 is what I'm going to rent first. Uh, 
but they've got less expensive ones. But this way, you got your maintenance covered and you've got everything. And yeah, so I rent a car and then we travel the country and we see what we want to see. And basically, we're going to take some YouTube videos and watch them and decide where to go. Maybe Patty Doyle series, which is really cool. And uh, he traveled to all 76 provinces. And uh, it also gives you an idea of what the hotels are like or where he stayed and so forth. Now, he, he traveled on a uh, motorcycle. I'm not going to be that brave because I don't heal that quick. But uh, ever since I no longer have a, a schedule where I have to meet up with anybody in the United States in the, you know, in the afternoon, you know, if I had somebody I had to talk with at 3 in the afternoon, well, heck, that was 2 or 3 a.m. for me. So I could never get a schedule. But uh, I'm not having to do that anymore. So every day I wake up at 6 o'clock. It's getting easier. I'm waking up before the alarm hits most of the time, which is what I used to do when I was on Easter Standard Time. But, uh, well, that's the that's sort of the announcement. I'm not going to buy a car. I was going to. I got my Thai driver's license, which helps. But this way, you can rent a car for a month and save maybe $100 over every best deal I could find. And then if you want to change cars, you want a little bigger car and a little smaller car, uh, they've got like a dozen locations around the country. You can you can turn it in there and get a new one somewhere else, get a different one. And we're just going to decide where we want to go and what we want to see and not have a condo for a while. And then uh, the main purpose is maybe we find some place that, you know, we say, hey, this is a really cool town. Let's, uh, let's stay here a little longer. Let's stay here for a couple months or whatever. You know, like I wouldn't want to be up north during burning season. But you'd stay there for a while and then head down south. We would, we would actually drive to Bouquet, which is an island, but you can take a ferry to, to get there. Uh, and I think you can also get to uh, Kasamui. That's an island, but there's a ferry where you put your whole car on and take a two-hour ferry ride or something to get to the island, spend some time on there. And to be honest, the reason I'm doing this live little broadcast is because if I put it up live, I can tell my people now, remember I had two channels. I had Plan Pack Travel and I had Marcana. I was really ambitious. I left the U.S. I had both them channels set up and I was going to do all that, but editing videos takes a lot of time. And I like doing my financial videos. Like I just did the one on the debt crisis. I don't know if you guys that, who are actually on the broadcast here looked at that I did a lot of research on it but it's too hard to manage two channels so I'm just putting everything on the mark on this channel here mark dash Hannah and it's it'll be easier that way but I intend to show you guys all of these places I end up at the little villages the rice fields the jungles wherever I happen to be around whatever city whatever island but for uh Starting in August, we'll leave and, and do at least till the end of the year is the plan. Of course, you know what they say about plans. They're only as good as till somebody punches you in the mouth the first time and then you change them. Who said that? Mike Tyson or somebody? Uh, but that's the plan, guys. So what are you all up to? Cameron, how, how's Sammy doing? Maybe you're still there. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But this is just a relaxing way to start your morning. Take a cup of coffee and then come down to the pool. This is on the 27th floor. It's quite breezy up here this morning. But at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, the breeze is pretty good. Uh, I'm actually sitting on one of these bar stools in the pool. And they've got a little bar where you can put your camera stuff up on it. So that's what we're going to be doing. And... Uh, by the way, this channel is going to get a little more edgy because back in the States, uh, I had a position with a company and the things you say online, uh, you never know when you're going to get canceled culture out of the place in the United States. 
So if you were to say what you actually think about some of the current events and the things that are happening, you can get uh, you can get fired. You can get canceled. But you know something? That's not applying to me pretty soon. And uh, I have a whole series of, of more edgy content, which I'm going to be talking a little bit about the ridiculousness. You know, more along the we're well, along the lines of uh, J.P. Awakens, uh, Russell Brandt. I'm going to be getting into where did America lose its meritocracy? You know, I mean, let's face it. What the hell? I mean, I'm tired of this, you know. I'm all for equity. No, I'm not. I'm for equality. Equality. That means if I get on a plane to go fly somewhere, I want to know that whoever's in that pilot seat is a qualified pilot. I don't give a damn if they're black, blue, Asian, Mexican, Latin American, European. I don't care if their hair is long or their eyes are bright, so long as they can fly all day and all night, you know? But no, we got to hire so many of this and so many of that. And we don't have enough women pilots. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, there's plenty of qualified women pilots. But I don't really like the fact that the virtue signaling says we need women pilots and she wants to be a pilot. So we'll hire her and we'll put her in the first seat after about, you know, five, six hundred hours of training. Then we'll stick her in a sim sim simulator for a few hours and then we'll put her underneath you know the good captain we'll train her hell with that get us a pilot that's got you know some hours under her belt if you're going to hire a woman find one of them fine women who served the united states in the military flying cargo planes back and forth or flying fighter planes back and forth give her a job but i'm tired of this yeah i don't care what color i when i get on the plane preferably I see somebody's got some gray in their hair. I don't care if it's a woman or a man. I hope they got some gray in their hair because experience is important because experience is usually what you get when you don't get what you want. So give me some experience behind the yoke of that plane. Now, I'm a commercially rated pilot. I was flying since 1980, shit, 1988, 1987, somewhere in there. Flew twin-engine aircraft, pressurized, cabin class, by own. Flew all over the country. I was I was famous in in my little town of Gross Beck for, hey, it's Tuesday afternoon, Timmy. You want to jump in the plane and let's fly and get an $800 hamburger somewhere. And we'd go down to Lunkin Airport, and I'd call them up, say, pull my plane out of the hangar, fuel it up, and we're going to fly to Atlanta and get ourselves a burger at the airport. I mean, we used to do that crazy stuff. Talk about setting money on fire. That was the way we did back then. I blew enough money to buy, like, Miami Town. Now, I couldn't buy Miami Town because my good friend Ray Shiley was there. He had more money than me. But I digress. But I'm going to come up with some more edgy stuff. You know, the world provides it every day. I couldn't believe after the Bud Light fiasco that Miller came out with that new ad about women were the first to make beer. So we gotta stop showing ads for Miller beer with beautiful women in bikinis because that's disgraceful. Now you want another you want another next one? Mars candy. Now I love candy, but I've given it up. I've got my sweets. I haven't had bread. I'm losing some weight. I don't know how much, but I am losing some because I stopped eating a lot of carbs and bread and low glycemic fruit, but Mars candy, Mars, M&M's, M&M's. How long they've been around, I don't have any idea, but they were around, I think, when I was a kid. Well, Mars came out and said, you know those little characters we got, the little M&M characters got the two little legs, and we got boy M&M's, and we got girl M&M's, and sometimes we have our girl M&M's in sexy little boots on their skinny little black legs, walking around going like this, trying not to get eaten, the next time somebody sees them, well, they've offended somebody because of those sexy little boots on the little black straight little leg on the Mars Candy cartoon. 
So they're, they're going to put the Mars Candy Girls in flat, frumpy shoes because they don't want a female M&M to be, become a sex object. They don't want disrespect to females of the world. Come on. Do we have to get offended at every freaking thing everywhere? Well, that's just... I mean, the world comes up with things to laugh at every day and thank God I'm over here laughing at them. Thank God for that. Now, they had a big election over here last Sunday, and they totally wiped out the ruling military class government that took effect in 2014. And the military over here said there won't be any more coups. But after they elect people over here, they really don't have a, gov a new government until all these elected officials, they elect 500 in their Congress and 250 in the Senate, but the 250 in the Senate seem to be appointed by the military. And uh, this new party started up and they literally kicked butt over here. They won 32 out of 33 seats inside of the city of Bangkok and they swept the nation and they, they're going to turn this place upside down. They want to change. They want to change how Thailand is being governed. And the interesting thing is now, I never smoke pot because I don't like to smoke. What I do, all I do when I was given, <coughs> well, you know, I just cough, so. Over here, the Minister of Health last June said, I'm taking marijuana, Mary Jane, and I'm gonna take it totally off of the banned substance list. And anybody wants to grow it, use it for recreation, they can use it. Well, inside of about 12 months, 14,000 cannabis stores were opened in the kingdom of Thailand. And the new party had just elected, part of their campaign was we wanted to do away with Mary, Mary, Jesus, I don't know what you, I, I'm told that you should never say that word, you know, but the uh, medicinal green stuff, they supposedly want to do away with that in Thailand. So it should be interesting when they have 14,000 people that spent money on storefronts and displays and some of these. Some of these uh, dispensaries itself are absolute first class places. I only saw them in YouTube. I, I did go there. But, because uh, I can't smoke, I can eat. That's always an option. Anyway, if you just got here, I see that there's five people online. Starting August, I won't have a condo in Bangkok and I will be traveling all over Thailand by car for the next six months at least. And I'm gonna be doing videos probably daily of the routine. And the routine will be different because if you're at a hotel, you know, I mean, if you're in a condo, you might stay in a condo. Who said that? Hugh, war on drugs is futile. It's not like the board. You're right. You're right. People are gonna do what they wanna do. It's trying to, it's like trying to outlaw stupidity. You know, we we try that every day, but that hasn't worked in history, outlawing stupidity. And I can't get stuck on stupid. But it'll be interesting over here if they try to take it away now that the population, they've become the, uh, the green leaf capital of Asia. Uh, they always had it around here, but now uh, people, you know, from fancy stores to people with a three foot by three foot fold out table standing on the sidewalk are selling that magic green leaf so we'll be traveling around we'll see what happens i appreciate y'all watching it's been a relaxing morning sitting here in the pool and uh there'll be some of your content coming very shortly on the channel
cancel me, baby. Go on. I no longer have that conservative mind. Well, I shouldn't say conservative. I was with, you know, I was constantly worried that wokeness would cancel me out. Oh, I didn't see that comment. I don't know what it said. I'm not sure how to get it back. Uh, that didn't work. Hold on. Maybe that'll get back. Uh, that me... Oh, got it. All right. Uh, windy there. Yes, Stephen, it is windy here. The wind is really whipping this morning. Uh, it, okay, I'm back. Yeah, a little connection problem here. It's 28 degrees Celsius here, which is like uh, 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a beautiful wind. The actual water is cool. Now, let me tell you, I learned something up here. This is on the 27th floor. If you want a warm pool at a hotel or condo, make sure the pool is down on the ground. Because when you're on the 27th floor, you're getting wind like this, it cools the pool. But if you're down on the ground, right now, if you drop down 27 floors and you get down there on ground level with all these tall buildings around you, it blocks all this wind. You know, if you notice, we're up pretty high here. If I turn this around, you see the tops of a lot of buildings. But you don't see that we're looking into too many of them. So the wind don't get blocked. And uh, if I ever lease another condo, guarantee you, I'm going to lease a condo that has the pool down on the ground floor. There's a lot of them that do that. This happens to be suspended out the side of the building on the 27th floor. I'm on the 34th floor. So it's, it's all right. I mean, I, I come down here, I said, splash around a little bit, make this, relax. I'm about ready to uh, go back and get a second cup of coffee. But you know they say something. Marcus Aurelius was a Stoic philosopher and a Roman emperor. And he was a very, uh, very intensely philosophical individual. And one of his sayings was basically, a day well begun is a day half done. When you wake up really early in the morning and you get a start on your day, you get a lot unaccomplished. Wake up at noon or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, before you know it, it's like, where'd the day go? Sometimes I got everything done and it's 10 in the morning. I say, hey, yeah, you know, I don't have anything to do for a while. Yeah, you know, I won't have to do anything at all. So, anyway, by the way, three month treasury bills, where it's at, you can buy them on the, on the used market, ones that are being resold. You don't get quite as much as participating in like a one month auction. But it's harder to do, and you got to wait to find out what price you get. But just uh, yesterday, they were giving out 5.17% annually on three-month treasury bills. So now you only get a fourth of that, but you're basically getting over, you know, 1.3% or something like that for a three-month period. Basically, if you put $100,000 into a T-bill, you probably make $1,250 on the $100,000 in a three-month period, which is a safer investment. Let me tell you, here's Hannah's prediction. I predict that the stock market's going to go sideways until some big old black swan comes from by. And by the end of this year, there's going to be 20% decline. Yeah, the, the stock market is being held up by seven stocks. Lord help you if one of them go down for any reason. One of the things that concerns me is any type of interjection with China would be very bad. You know, the recent Elon Musk article, uh, interview with with David Faber. Anybody watch that? If, they, if you watch the Elon Musk article, it's... Uh, his interview, he said, China's position is Taiwan should be integrated. That's their position. And he said, you don't have to read between the lines. You just have to read the lines. That's their position and they mean it. 
And let me tell you, he also made a statement which he would know more than most. The world's economies and China, to separate China would be like trying to separate conjoined twins. If Taiwan or China has a problem and stops delivering the stuff they deliver to us, it will hurt both of us. It will hurt China and the rest of the world. I mean, chips. China makes chips. But if you want a toaster and it has a chip in it to measure the time, that's a chip made in China. They make chips for stupid things that need chips. You want advanced chips that go into cars and computers and cell phones and all that? China doesn't make them. Taiwan does. China doesn't make them. You know, if China and the U.S. get into an altercation, nobody's going to be happy. Nobody's going to be happy. And, and that is concerning. But here's the thing. You can avoid the recession that's coming. You can. You can avoid the recession that's coming. Or at least I can. I can go where I'm treated best. Not every place in the world is going to feel the pain at the same magnitude. Some places are going to feel it more. Some places are going to feel it less. When pain comes, I'm not going to go for the aspirin. I'm going to go to where they treat me best. And, you know, not every place during the great financial reset in 2008, where we had bank failures, like Lehman Brothers and all that, not a single bank in Singapore failed. Not one, not even close. There's a lot of places that are not correlated to the pain. So keep that in mind. I've been droning on here for a few minutes, but like I said, coming up shortly, we are going to be traveling and showing you new places almost on a daily basis because we're not going to hang out in any hotel room longer than getting up, having some coffee, and going out for breakfast. So... Me and Nora are going to go have some fun because, as I said before, you only get so many trips around the sun. I sold my house, my cars, my guns. I came to Thailand, and I'm having fun. So thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye. But -bye. leave me bleed. That's all, folks. Oh, there's a... There's a view to the other side. I didn't know I could switch at it. There you go. Steven, see you later, buddy. Cameron, see you later. There's a view of the rest of the pool and the gym. I'm still looking for the button, the button to turn off live broadcast because I don't usually do live broadcasts. Bye-bye.